Hey guys, my name is Gabe with JTech, and today I'm going to show you how to take out, uh, disassemble, reassemble, and reinstall a uh, strut style shock absorber. Now, that word means that it acts like a strut type of shock, but it isn't necessarily a strut. Alright, so let's get started. Now this vehicle is a uh, 2006 Chevy uh, Colorado, and uh, as you can see here, we got a we got SLA suspension. All right, sway bars up front. Right. You probably know what I'm talking about. Okay, so the easiest and most efficient way we're going to do this is we're going to this up uh, not. Just, okay, uh, we're going to disconnect the link for the uh, for the sway bar. All right, so that link is on the belt right here, right where my hand is, on the bottom arm. Okay, and after we do that, we're going to disconnect the shock absorber from the lower arm or lower control arm. All right, what we do that is we're going to uh, we're going to take a uh, excuse me. We're gonna take a, a retro right here and hold this, and then we're going to take the air gun, take the uh, take the nut off like that. All right. And then after that, we're gonna get these uh, three uh, nuts off on the top. They can be a little difficult, but we're doing it from from this side to in through the hood. So it's gonna be that way. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to get situated up in here. Make sure the uh, can't really see right here. But we're going to make sure the bottom part. Of the shock. This part, okay, here, here, this part, uh, matches up with a little hole right here. And then also got to make sure these screws, they're, they're in a very certain place. Remember, you can't really turn them uh, after, you, after you get the spring in here. So to make sure the screws match up to the, uh, the bottom of the strut when you put it in. Alright, so first, you slide it up in here. Now the sway bar link is going to have to be uh, undone still. Alright, so you can't have that done. Firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, these rings here and we're going to tighten up the clamps. What this does, I actually loosened it at that time. What this does is make sure that if the spring does pop out, that it can't go anywhere. That's what the bottom is. The top, the top is stationary. The bottom moves up under. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that's good on both sides. Tighten it down. Now it doesn't need to be uh, extremely tight because most likely it's not going to go anywhere unless the metal in the clamps fail. But uh, yeah, so we got those tightened down. And next, we're going to take this bar up here, and we're going to crank it down. What that's going to happen, what that's going to do is, it's going to do, uh, compress the spring just enough that we can take the, the bottom of this, and we can be able to move this uh, up under the spring just a little bit to where this is barely separated. All right, so that's what we're looking for. Alright, now starting to give me some resistance here. Alright. Not quite yet, just a little bit more. Okay, see? Get it clanking. Alright, that should be just enough. Yeah. So on the safe side, we can do a little bit more. All right, that's good. All right, now we're going to move just a little bit, just enough to where this bottom part of the spring, when I release this top nut, it won't shoot this uh, the shock out. So uh, it's important to know that when you put it in a wall-mounted style clamp like this, to get as big of a bite on the spring as you can. So like we got it on on this one and this one to get this get getting most of the spring 
uh, just don't do it something like this or right here get on the uh, the outside ones if you can all right so now that we've got that done we're going to take our air gun and we're going to pop off this uh, this nut right here and that's on okay now <laughs> made this mistake before but make sure you're holding this bottom part when you take off this nut up here So now that that's off, we should be able to slide it off easily. And what should come off with it is this impact bushing. When you put new ones on, they're not going to look like this. New ones are usually kind of square. Then we got this uh, this washer. It's kind of cupped a little bit on the inside there. You can see that on the back. It's flat. The cup part is going to go toward the bushing. Okay. Then we got this dust sleeve. It protects the. Uh, Takes the shotgun over itself from getting dust all around here, and then we got this. So one way to tell if it's if it's bad, uh, if it is a liquid style um, shock absorber, if you can push it in and pull it out pretty easy, that means it's pretty loose. But if it's kind of difficult, then it's good. So this one seems to be okay. Now what this came off of is a 2006. Uh, Chevy Colorado. It's actually right behind the camera. Okay, now on the uh, on the spring was left on top, right up under the uh, the the nut should be this washer. All right, and this washer usually has a, a smaller washer or a nut with a washer built into it. On top of that, and below that, again, a cupped washer. Is going to go onto this bushing like that with the cup side on the bushing. So, bushing like that. And then these are actually two different pieces, but they've been there so long that they've become one. But, uh, yeah, this is a big metal uh, washer. And you've got your. Uh, plastic uh, bushing acts as a boot really so the way this is the top of the spring rests right here the the very last coil and that's really your marker and then we just have a bare spring left all right then to uh, put it back together you just reverse everything you just did so what do you do yeah take we took this off remember we put this back on there and turn it until the bottom of I mean, the uh, end of the coil. Now, as far as putting these back together, you can pretty much match them up. Might be a little bit difficult to see, but you see right here, there's none of those uh, there's those holes, and then here, there's in uh, there's indentions all around here matching up with these holes, and there's nothing right there. So you want to match those holes up. Pretty well. Now those holes aren't actually on there when you first get the part. It's just again they've been on there so long they made their indention from wear and heat. All right, I'm gonna have the side with the nuts over there. Okay, now it's important to note. Uh, that when you put this back in, you know, obviously assembled, um, it goes in a certain way, and you can't you can't really turn this once there's pressure applied to this. So you're not gonna so uh, you can't really see it, but there, there's three studs here that uh, connect into the into the vehicle on, on the top uh, on the top arm. And if you get those up in there, and then 
this part doesn't match on the bottom arm, you're, you can't really turn it. It's very difficult. So, all right, put the dust sleeve back. You need that. All right, just like the top, we got to match up the uh, the bottom coil with a certain indentation. Kind of difficult to see, but the end of the coil is right there. And there's an indentation right here. I'm gonna match those up. Yeah. Boom, they're matched up now. Yeah. All right, so uh, when putting together suspension stuff like this to avoid squeaking the manufacturers made it to where metal is never really touching metal so just keep that in mind that's a little pattern to remember but you know you get a metal washer you know metal bushing goes on top so boom right not metal bushing rubber bushing I'm sorry all right and the next a metal washer cup side onto the uh, rubber bushing and I got that Actually, you know what? I messed up. Okay, so my mistake was this. I put this shock on with the shock itself, this shock assembly, um, and the, uh, the dust, the dust cover without the washer or the, the bushing. Okay. Yeah, I'm forgetting. But that was my mistake, and it got fixed. So now we're just gonna put it right back up in there. We don't gotta remove any of this uh, this top. Just put it in, and then continue on. All right, we're in the indentation on the bottom. Boom. So, all right. Metal, I mean, uh, rubber bushing onto the big metal washer, little metal washer, cup side on the bushing, again, <laughs> round two, and then we want to put the nut on there. Alright, we want to put the nut on there. Now, when you put this on there, you're not going to torque it down all the way. Not yet. Yeah. They want to make sure all these things are uh, the indentations on the top and bottom are lined up. Can I set it up first? Okay. Get everything uh everything good. Seems to be good. Alright. Now now we can put the impact to it. Ah. Okay. When you do put the final torque on there, you want to make sure the spring is down, so we want the spring down a bit. Alright, now we got the spring down. We can tighten it up and then be done with it. Uh, just a warning while you're doing this, uh, I would strongly, strongly advise you have eye protection because if this thing pops off, it very well could take your eyes out. Might take your head off, but you know, when your head rolls around, uh, at least your eyes will still be inside. So that's a good thing for the casket. Now that we got that on there, uh, should be good to go. Put it back in the uh, in the truck, and then right on. All right. 
Alright, so, it's whole, everything seems to be intact, nothing's broken, I'm not dead. Okay, now that we put the strut, strut style shock assembly back together, uh, we're going to put it back into the truck. Alright, just uh, give me a little bit of trouble, but what you got to do when you uh, put this in, the SLA is going to give you... It's going to give you a bit of resistance, let's just say that. And uh, what you got to do, you got to get it like halfway up there and then it'll stop going. So after, at, when that happens, you got to uh, just take the, grab the steering knuckle, pull up, and then push up with the strut. And then uh, that should get it in. If not, then you're doing it wrong. Alright, let's find our hole, match it up. It's all looking good right now. Ah, All right. Now we got it in there. It's lined up. Now we just gotta get the uh, the bolts and nuts in there. Okay. You want to all right, get that one in first. So what you want to do is you want to put the bottom one in first so you're not fighting with everything else up top. All right, that gives a good foundation. Uh, sits it in there. And so I'm just going to take this nut. Just hand tighten it for now so you don't lose it. And afterwards, we're going to, uh, we're going to tighten it down to torque. Now the way I'm about to get these three uh, back in here, same, same way I got them out, they're going to go in from here, but an easier way, uh, with a little bit more time consuming though, is to go in from the top. You'd have to take some of the brake lines out and uh, a little bit of wiring, but it's a, it's a little bit more convenient. You don't have to fight with it as much. Alright, so get all three studs in there, and next we're going to try to put all nuts in there. Again, we're just going to hand tighten them, and then we're going to come back. All right, so you're gonna have to lift up to get the uh, to get those studs out. Be careful not to drop these in there. You have a hard time getting them back if they stay in the engine bay. All right, got that. One. All right, now uh, all four nuts and bolts on the the uh, the strut assembly or the strut style shock assembly. Excuse me. Um, are tightened down. Next, we got to get the uh, the link for the sway bar uh, tightened down. And after that, everything's just fine. And then we're going to uh, we're going to put everything back to torque. <laughs> Again, your push up on the arm here. Alright, so again, the lower arm will give you trouble with this. Uh, that's, that's where the torsion link connection is. Um, so, what you gotta do is you gotta put it in the slot a little bit, lift it up as much as you can to where you can put the bolt uh, for the rest of the paper. And just get it through and then put that nut on there and then tighten it down, and you're good. Alright, the uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna torque it down. All right, now everything's uh, torqued down to spec. Uh, the nuts you're going to be torquing, just to recap, is the uh, the sway bar uh, link nut. You're gonna the strux the strut style shock assembly. I'm sorry, the name is uh, complicated. Uh, you're gonna bolt down and tighten that one spec, and then these three up here, uh, that connects the shock to the frame. Alright, and then that's going to be it. 
So, uh, <sighs> yeah, thanks for sticking around with me uh, through that, and uh, hopefully you find this helpful. Uh, you can you can most likely do this on your own in your garage somewhere. Uh, it doesn't require very many tools. Um, with that all said, uh, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.